Hey guys, how are you doing? <laughs> I pray you guys have a good day today. I pray all is well in your world. Hey. Hey Rosie Posey, Chastity's in the building. We're not gonna be on long. Hey man of God, how are you? I need somebody to keep time for me. I need to get off at 7.48. Hey Sarita, how are you doing? I have a... Uh, ooh. I feel good. Okay, Siri. I'm glad you feel good. Um, <laughs> um, how was y'all's day? What's up? How you doing? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Periscope is doing a lot of things to the app. It's really weird. Hey, sister. How are you doing? So, um, tomorrow... We're, hey, Shauna, Shauna, we're going to be a little weird schedule. We just have a little weird schedule, guys. We're going into that time. Um, I need to go look at a wedding venue. Um, yeah, it's, it's because they added the features to it, and it's up to date. I, I, um, but anyway, um, yeah, so I have to go look at a wedding venue tomorrow. Um, so I think I'm supposed to go at like 5 o'clock. And I'm not getting married. <laughs> no, it's um, I get to officiate like the wedding of the year. So, um, hey, how are you? Um, and it's like supposed to be like an hour away. So that's going to throw us off a little bit. So we'll be on. Hey, Dr. Amy, how are you? Hey, Chandra. Um, oh, you wanted me to get married. Come on, man of God. Go oh, high five. Yes. No. Um, but so I'm going to go look at the venue with them. Um, to, you know, adult a little bit or something. Um, so we'll still be on, but I, it may be a little bit later if that's okay with you guys. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm there for them, right? I want to make sure that I'm, that I'm there for them. So today, um, I have an interview at eight. Um, and so I need to get off at seven forty nine. <laughs> but I just wanted to pray for you guys today. I just, I don't know if you guys, if you're not part of the prayer wall, um, I put some little things um, here and there in there. I don't want to clutter it up too much, so we need to take some stuff out. But um, this morning when I woke up, and so we're starting. Is everybody okay? Is everybody good? Praise the Lord. Um, do you have your pen and your paper? Because God is going to start speaking, and he's going to be speaking to you. He's going to be speaking to you. And so even as I was praying um, earlier today, hey, how are you? Even if I was, I was praying earlier today, um, according to the unctioning of the Holy Spirit concerning this topic, I really felt that there was a, it, the atmosphere lifted. I really felt like there, there was a heaviness that was breaking. Amen. And so I think we may have hit the jackpot and that's the beauty of prayer guys. That's the beauty of rolling with the Holy Spirit. We don't need to know everything. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't need to know everything. And the less I know, the more I can, I have access to. The less I think I know, the more I have access to because I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. And so sometimes when we think we got a little bit of understanding, we lean to it. And so when we understand that we don't know anything, we lean to him. And when we lean to him, what we cannot see, he will reveal. Period. Point blank. He will reveal. We don't have to play the guessing game. We ain't got to do. Um, can you demonstrate how you proceed in the courts of heaven? I can. I can. I don't know if we can do it today, but absolutely. We may do it a little bit today. It's easy. It's easy, woman of God. It's so easy. We have to take all of this boo-boo for cuckoo puffs and, and, and lucky charms out of it. You, you just do it according to the Spirit of God. You just do it according to the Holy Spirit. There is no wrong way. I mean, unless you're doing something crazy, there is no wrong way. And so the more I go, the more he shows me. And because I don't know about the whole system, he's the one that's got to bring me to the whole system. Right. So it's like just oh, we ain't got to say the right words. We don't have to wear the right colors. We just go with the Holy Spirit. Right. So anyway, so this morning, so we're going to we may do it a little bit because I, I did go anyway. So this morning, come on. you got Yes. I don't know anything, absolutely nothing, right? And so this morning when I woke up, um, I was just like, you know how you talk to God? You know what I'm saying? I was just like talking to God really not about nothing. And then I heard him say to pray about nightmares. And so I know that he wanted me because I saw the prayer wall. I know he wanted me to pray. So I was going to go live in the group 
And I, you know, I really don't want to do that. But I was like, okay, I'll go live and pray for nightmares. Okay, got it, got it. And the Holy Spirit was like, no, I need you to look up the word nightmares. I need you to understand what is a nightmare. And I was like, a nightmare, this is a niche trying to be like, I know what a nightmare is. I was like, you know, a nightmare is a really, really, really bad dream. <laughs> As I was like, it's a really bad dream. So the Lord deals with me because I'm a wordsmith with etymology. I can really understand the picture, understanding the where the word came from, right? So I just did a quick Google search. So if you have your phone or your tablet or something, I want you to look it up. So I screenshotted it in the group. So look it up for yourself. So I looked it up and it has one of the words, before we even get to the etymology in dictionary.com, one of the words where it comes from, because it's an old English word, um, is incubus. And incubus is not in the Bible. Succubus is not in the Bible. It's not. And the idea, see, this is, this is where it gets, this is where, I, I'm just going to be real with you guys, okay? So the idea of incubus and succubus comes from Genesis chapter 6, but it's a real loose idea. Why? Because there is this, another lost sea scroll that suggests that there were two sets of humans. I don't know if y'all know about this. <laughs> okay, so there were two lines of people, and one line fell away from God, and the other line, the Adamic line, they stayed with God. I don't know if y'all, so um, commentators, yes, have a real hard time dealing with the whole incubus, succubus, all of that, because, and then with even the fallen angels um, having, this is, it's not in the Bible, it's just commenta commentaries, what's in the Bible is in the Bible. And even with the fallen angels, right? Even with the fallen angels, you got to be careful reading that kind of stuff. You got to be, you got to be right. You got to make sure that the Lord told you to read all of that. Um, right, right. And so that's my whole thing is Cain. The Bible says Cain went away to a far country. And he brought himself back a wife. Right. Um, however, incubus and succubus, it just talks about. So when you hear people talking about that, they're, try, they're going to tie it to Genesis chapter 6 when it's talking about those angels that were looking upon women in the earth and then they laid with them and they produced, right? They were giants. They were giants. Nephilim. They were giants. However, it does not say incubus and succubus. It does not say that. It's not in the Bible. It says giants. Not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. Incubus and succubus is not in the Bible. When we talk about the Marine Kingdom, right? So I'm just giving you guys a little, when you talk about the Marine, y'all heard about Marine? Y'all heard about Marine Kingdom? Marine Demons? It's in the Bible. It's right there in plain sight. It's in the Bible. It's in Hebrew. It's covered in, in Hebrew. When you look at a word in Hebrew, it's right there. It talks about, he said Aquaman. <laughs> it talks about creatures of the sea. And that's what it's translated to. It's right there in the Bible, right? So anyway, this morning I get up. And so I'm just talking about, let me just talk about me. Let me just, you do you. Let me talk about me. All right. So I know that there are a lot, there are a lot of concepts that are not in the Bible per se. There's a lot of principles that are not in the Bible per se that we can draw inference to the power, the person, and the presence of God. Because of other principles that are in the Bible, right? However, for me, how I work is I have to see the principle. I've got to understand the principle and how God deals with the principle before I go head on into it, praying it, all of those things. I need to understand. This is just me. I need to understand the principle. I'm not going to get on the bandwagon of what everybody's out here doing and everybody's out here talking about. If I don't, if I, me, a niece, if I fully don't understand something, I'm just not going to roll with it because everybody else is rolling with it. That's that, that will get a niece. Let me talk about me in trouble. Okay. So when this morning, when I looked up this word, when I looked up nightmares, incubus, I don't know if you're looking at it. I want you to see it for yourself. Just in the dictionary.com on Google. Incubus came up and it talks about, we know when you hear Incubus and Succubus talked about in the church, uh, Succubus is the woman, Incubus is the man. If you look at it there, Incubus is a female spirit. It's a female spirit, Latin root, Latin root, right? It's a female spirit. 
Oops. And, um, okay. So, and, and the whole idea, the whole premise of this idea, whatever it was, was a female spirit, when people were asleep, would lay on the person and try and suffocate you. They would try to suffocate you. So that's where nightmares, the M-A-R-E-S is M-A-E-R-E-S in Old English, in Old English, okay? So, you know, I was thinking about what the church talks about and then what we see here. Hey, birthday girl, what we see here. And so I just wanted to pray about nightmares, right? According to what God is saying and taking an idea Hey, how are you taking the ideas? Yep, sleep paralysis, all of that. Because here's the thing, let me, let me, this is why this hits home for me so much. Because sleep paralysis. Because when I was a kid, you guys know my story, I was trapped inside of my dreams. I was trapped inside of my dreams and I could not get out when I was five, six, seven. And I didn't want to dream. I didn't want to see angels. I didn't want to see demons. I never had issues with sex demons. Spirit of husband, wives, and, and, and all of that. I, that didn't resonate. But I would have dreams where my voice was being choked out. I would have dreams where I was, you know, somebody's laying on my chest and I can't sleep and I can't breathe. Right? Um, people would come in my house when I was a young adult. When I had my own apartment, people would come. And the same thing that was happening to me was happening to them. So they will wake up, they good, they cool, they chilling in their own crib, they can sleep, they sleep real good. You come to my house, you, you have sleep paralysis. You, you wake up and you can't move. Right? So my thing, that was my issue, and I know that there's a lot of different things that go on and a lot of different, certainly when deliverance, when talks about sleep paralysis, but let's talk about this, there's, there's different types of suffocating, right? So there's the sleep paralysis, and of course there's a scientific, you know, kind of way out that, you know, you wake up, but your body's not really awake and you're still in the in-between state, whatever, Right. But then also, what about in dreams where something is being suffocated, where I don't know if you guys have had this, but for me, orating or the gift of teaching, preaching, um, all of presenting, presenting content, my voice that I, I would have this reoccurring dream where my voice literally was being choked out of me. And I was using all of my force and all of my energy and I could only get out like this much of my voice. And I would have that reoccurring dream over and over and over and over and over and over, right? That is a type of suffocation. What about when you wake up, right? Hey, what about when you wake up and the idea, the revelation is taken from you or is suffocated. It cannot breathe. In the Bible, breathe or breath is life. Breath is life. Spirit, breath, life. It is the same concept. It means a living thing. And so the information, the revelation, the downloads of what God gives us is life. Man shall not live by bread and by bread alone, but by every word. The Bible says that the word of the Lord is God breathed. So essentially what God is speaking in his word, essentially what God is speaking by revelation, it's God breathed and it becomes our very life. That's what prayer is. Prayer is life. Prayer is breath because we are breathing out the word of the Lord. We don't know how we ought to pray. But the Holy Spirit breathes, right? The Holy Spirit is giving us the download, the breath of God. God breathed into Adam and that's what gave Adam life. So what comes out of God is what sustains our very life. And so anytime, come on, it's being choked out. Hey, woman of God, right? And so, you know, this morning, you know, when I woke up, let's stay on track. This morning when I woke up, I really... I really felt like the leading of the Lord, uh, you know, was talking about this and I started praying about this and I put the post up and it seems like, you know, people are really um, having issues with issues with their sleeping, right? And it is to the enemy wants to cut off, the enemy wants to suffocate what God is downloading, what God is causing the, the, the life that we need, the breath, the wind that we need to function and operate at another elevation. Come on, guys. Um, 
when you, when you're a runner or when you, are, you know, climb mountains, we're talking about different elevation, your lungs have to take on a, a different capacity. You have to be able to take in and you've got to be able to hold on. Come on, swimmers. I, I don't know how to swim, but I'm just, I'm just kind of making this up because I think that's what it, if you're a swimmer, you got to be, you got to be able to hold on to the breath, right? Because you may not have access to as much oxygen as you're going through. So you train your lungs, you train your body to hold on to the breath that you have access to. And so it is. When we dream, and here's the thing, let me just put this little preface right here. We are not lusting after a dream. We do not idolize the dream of the Lord. We do not idolize open visions. We do not idolize any of that. We want God. That's what we want. We do not, God, give me a dream. God, give me a dream. God, give me a dream. I want a dream. I want a dream. I want a dream. Do you want a dream or do you want God? Right? And so God, however you're speaking, that's what we want because I understand your breath is my life. I understand your word is my life and that's what I'm after. We want God, right? We want God. However, dreaming is tied to the prophetic. God said in his scripture, he won't do anything less first. He reveal it to the prophets. Dreaming and open visions is a part of functioning in the prophetic of the Lord. And the Bible also says that all men should prophesy. Come on, guys. When we see, when we look at Hebrew, when we look at the language of Hebrew itself, there are sounds, but there are also pictures. Why? Because the picture causes us to see. Seeing is so huge because we have to be able to see in a realm and a dimension that is closed off to the natural eye. In order for us to function, we need to be able to see. And seeing, even though you may not be a seer, you should be able to see. And so the breath of God opens up our eyes. The breath of God opens up our ears and our ears begin to see. The breath of God, thank you sister, the breath of God causes what we see to that we, we paint the world with images called words. Your whole world is painted with images called words. And words within themselves, you can't see. You cannot see these words that are coming out of my mouth. But you see great pictures. You see, you see pictures of what I'm saying. You see pictures of your dreams. You see pictures of your thoughts. And that's what paints your world. We live in a world of images that were created by words. That in and of themselves don't necessarily, you cannot see, right? Even if I'm looking at a word that's written on a page, that word paints a picture for me to see. So seeing is huge. And especially with the word of the Lord, it creates vision. And without prophetic vision, the people perish. Without being able to see, we're not just talking about prophecy. Lift your hands. Let's say, no, no, without vision. And that it's really prophetic vision. Without the foretelling, without the, the, the word of God, vision, the people perish. All right. So what, what, what's going on with dreams? If there's a portion of our life that's cut off, that is, that is hindered, because we cannot see, then that is a picture in the natural world of a portion of our life that is cut off because we cannot see. And that, my friend, is the real nightmare. Having vision but not being able to see. Being able to look and see it in a realm and a dimension but not be able to touch it, hold it, hold on to it, talk to it, maneuver it, manipulate it around it. That's the real nightmare. The waking nightmare, come on guys, of being suffocated. The waking nightmare, we're about to pray for it. The waking nightmare of not being able to fully function in the breath, the wind, the vision, the images of God. Hallelujah. 
So, you know, a lot of times we talk about bad dreams, we talk about nightmares, but we, we have to understand, instead of taking your dream life and your waking life and breaking them apart, how about we put them together? How about we put them together? If you, if, if you, you know, trek with me for any amount of time, you'll know that when like you give me a dream or like, you know, I hear a dream or something like that, I start maneuvering in the dream and I'll start talking to you as if we're in the dream. And so it can be confusing because you're like, what are you talking about? But I'm in the dream. I'm moving around in the dream. I see it and I'm maneuvering in it because to me, there isn't really, if it's the dream of the Lord, it, it, we need to, we need to see it and we need to function. And we, God, he says, I live, I live, move and have my very being. I'm seeing it in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So I'm in both places at the same time. Is this making sense? And so a lot of times we choose where we're going to maneuver. So we will try to uh, be in the, in the, in this natural realm, trying to access, come on, spiritual things instead of being in the spiritual realm and governing the natural thing. Right? So I'm in the spirit realm first because that's where the government comes from. That's where the power comes from, if this is making sense. And so we need to be more um, uh, 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 aware and moving in that and expecting that, come on, instead of moving more in the natural realm, trying to access, come on, the spiritual realm or the domain of God. This is making sense. I pray it's making sense. And so anyway. Today, just wanted to pray um, about, and Sabine, I got to do a thing. And so if we don't get to you, because I got to get off at 748, if we don't get to your birthday, we're going to get to it tomorrow, and it's going to be the first thing. I was hoping you were on first, because it's going to be the first thing, so I need you on, um, hopefully, seven, if that's the time. Okay? All right. So here's the thing. I'm not just praying for your dreams. I just don't want you, as your intercessor... I don't want you to have, just have the dream of the Lord. I want you to have the fullness of the Lord. I want you to have the fullness of his voice. I want you to have the fullness of his shadow. I want you to have the fullness of his presence. I want you to experience the fullness that is being offered to you. Hey, sister, if this is making sense. And so one, let's in, in the place of your dreams, anything that is attacking, anything that's coming to suffocate, anything that's coming to sniff out, anything that's coming to snuff out the fullness of the measure of God that he has decided for you to be maneuvering in, in the, in the realm of the unseen or the realm of the seen. Tonight, in the name and in the blood of Jesus, we decree and we declare that God, the hand of the Lord, the power of God, by the desire of God. I pray y'all are taking notes. The desire of God breaks things because the desire of God is what brings us into revelation. The desire of God, the desire of God, not the desire of man, the desire of God. He first loved us. It's a principle. It's a principle. And so when God wants me and God wants you in a particular place, the desire of God, the purpose of God, the good pleasure of God, it begins to break things off. It begins to reveal things because God says enough is enough. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just bless you tonight that you have decided upon your throne as judge, court of heaven, as judge, that the desire, the good pleasure of God, that what you began in us, you will complete. You will perform the work that you began in us. And this is one of the performing the works. Hallelujah. That God, when you breathe into Adam, that was a first mention of your breath and what it means to mankind. And so we go back to the place of first mention. We go back to the place where you said, my breath is good for man. My breath is needful for man. My breath is what makes man alive. And so everything that is in your breath, the inspiration, the intellect, the communion, the desire, the need for you, everything that is in your breath, let it be activated in us in the name and in the blood of Jesus. When we accepted Jesus Christ, all things passed away. The veil was rent and now we have access to the fullness. 
of your good pleasure. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we fling off. We fling off. We let go of every hindrance. We close the door to every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus that will come to suffocate. And so we enforce your scroll in your courts that say, can any of the plans of God be thwarted? And so the good pleasure, your will is your plan. Hallelujah. Hey, man of God, your good pleasure, hallelujah, is your will and it cannot be thwarted. Your word is your good pleasure and it cannot be thwarted. Your breath is your will and it cannot be thwarted. Your finger written upon the tablets of our heart cannot be thwarted. Your word as it concerns us written in our books cannot be thwarted. And so we don't come on our own accord. We don't come on them that you love us and your mercy. We come on the fact, God, that heaven and earth would pass away before one jot or tittle of your word would. And so, God, what is your word concerning your people? What is your word concerning this time? How is your voice supposed to be booming in our lives? How is the revelation supposed to be flowing in our lives? Heaven and earth would pass away. Before one jot or tittle of your word is what is your plan and your pleasure concerning you having access and communion with us in the name of Jesus? What are we supposed to be seeing when we go to sleep at night? What are we supposed to be hearing when we go to sleep at night? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine who would dare come against, hallelujah, the armies of the living God when they are asleep? Hallelujah. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would try to hinder your people in their waking life from doing your good pleasure and your will in the earth realm? Living God who looks over the living covenant, the blood covenant, the salt covenant. We enforce those things in your courts today in the name of Jesus. We do not war on our own. We do not war with our own weapons. We do not war according to what we think we know about the scripture. We war according to God, your plan, your word, and your good pleasure in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, Father, in the court of heavens, that's what we ask right now. What are we supposed to be seeing? What are we supposed to be hearing? What are we supposed to be moving in? Every enigma, every mystery and dark saying, these, God, are your kings and they are searching out the mysteries. And we say to you, God, in the court, it is our honor to uncover your mysteries. Hallelujah. Eye hasn't seen and ear hasn't heard and it hasn't entered into the heart of man. But according to your word, God, we have access to that. And so God in your courts, what we have access to, we say to you, King of glory, we receive that access in the name and in the blood of Jesus. And so we repent where you are, begin to repent. We repent for covenants we forge in ungodly and dark places. We repent for covenants and doors we did not close. When, when, you, uh, when God calls those relationships to break up, we repent. We repent when we uh, saw things were going on and we still moved in folly and that became an open door for, su for the suffocation of the breath of God in our life. We repent in the name of Jesus and so God, even what is there and we cannot see, we approach the bench, we approach the bench and we cry out for the blood of Jesus. We approach the bench and we ask Jesus to speak on our behalf. We ask Jesus, the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. The lamb slain before the foundation of the world. The lamb slain before the foundation of our foundation. We ask for it to speak. To testify. Here's the thing. We're still praying. Here's the thing. To uh, the, the, the prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. Prophecy is a testimony of Jesus Christ. That word, hallelujah, testimony in Greek, it means martyr. And so when you talk about less will and testament and you talk about martyr, he died so that the less will and testament could be activated for you. He just didn't stay dead. And so what happens is when that last will and testament, I need y'all to come with me. When that last will and testament, when it is challenged, then he sits in the witness chair and he gives his eyewitness account because it's the testimony of Jesus Christ. I need y'all to see that. Do you, are you guys with me? And so it is the testimony, the New Testament. You cannot get the testament or the will unless someone dies. He died so that you could have the benefits of the scripture. He died so that you could be redeemed. And all of the benefits that come with being the redeemed are yours. 
And so when these benefits come into question, when these benefits are challenged by the adversary, then the one who testifies sits in the seat and he begins to give his eyewitness account of what it should be, what he died for. Hallelujah. So it's a twofold thing. Hallelujah. And so that's why we approach the bench and we call for the, for, for Jesus to testify and the blood of Jesus to testify because the blood of Jesus is a witness to the witness. Hallelujah. That you have a right. And so what I cannot, he does. Because whatever I am being accused of, whatever the open door is, he reminds the court that it hung on the cross. It's finished. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we just thank you that it is finished. Come upon the lives of your people. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. And so whatever we're grappling with, and it's just that easy. Well, it's just that easy. We come against, thank you, Holy Spirit, that, oh, it's harder than that. No, we got to go through. In the court system, it's easy. When you out here doing deliverance and you out here warfaring without the legal documents, that's when it becomes hard and arduous. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. That we and we provoke, we say uh, that our word in the courts before you is that if any man be in Jesus, the one who's testifying for us, the blood that cries out for us, the lamb slain, if any one of us is in him and all of us are in him, then we are new. We are new. We are new. And all things have passed away. The old doors, the old openings, the old crevices, the old habits, they have passed away. And all things have become new. Our ear has become new. Our eye has become new. Our heart has become new. Our reasoning has become new. Our remembrance has become new. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you that that is the word. Oh, judge, render a verdict for us that tonight when we go to bed, that we would see that there has been a change that our dreaming and how we encounter you has become new. All things have passed away. All shenanigans not being able to remember, not being able to understand, going through seasons where we don't have your voice, going through seasons where we don't pray, going through seasons where we don't have unders. All things have passed away. And behold, gaze at, look at, all things have become new. All things have become new. And so in the courts, in the name of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, by the power invested, God and your intercessor, I loose a decree in the realms of the heavens that all things for your people have become new. And they are getting ready to experience the new, new of interacting with you. The new, new of hearing your voice. The new, new of worship. The new, new of the new, new of having you in the name of Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. 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 Gone is the day when we're interacting with God from the old place, expecting the old thing. Gone is that day. And so God activate, hallelujah, the faculty of hearing in every realm and dimension of your people. The try the being a, a spirit, a soul, and a body. Activate every ear. Hallelujah. So that we can hear you like never before. So that we can engage with you. We do not lust for prophecy. We do not lust for miracles. We pen for you like the deer pen for the water brooks. Hallelujah. That's what we do. We want you. We want you. That's our cry. That's the cry in the courtroom. We want you. We desire you. We want to know you. We want to understand the secret counsel. We want to know what makes you tick. We want your heart beating in our chest. We just don't want the, the mind of Christ. We want the heartbeat of Jesus. We want to walk around with the heartbeat of Jesus. We want you. We want you, we want you, we want you. And so where the adversary says we don't want you, where the adversary says that there was another idol, we say that in the courts today, the high places are being burnt up. The idols and the images are being burnt up. It is you and you alone that your people are chasing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I got happy. And so, Father, I thank you. 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 I thank you for uh, the, the judgments being rendered on behalf of heaven. Not your people, but heaven. That God, these your people are the crop of heaven. These your people are the harvest of
of heaven. These your people are the forerunners of the earth. These your people will be on fire and set on fire and be let loose in the realm of the earth. They shall be people who are activated in the things of God. They shall be people who are activated in the love of God. They shall be people who are activated in how to worship him. Hallelujah, because the word says signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow, shall follow. So that means we're not chasing signs, wonders, and miracles. They follow the believer. You're not chasing them. So we sever that. You're not chasing a sign. You're not chasing a wonder. You're not chasing to prophesy. You're not chasing that. No, they follow you. They follow the believer. They follow the believer. And so God, thank you that in the courts of heaven tonight, you're making us believers. According to what that word means to you. Believers. 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 And so our first act under this new edict is we believe you're speaking to us and we can hear you. We can hear you in this new way. We can hear you in this new place. Our first act of worship in this, under this new edict, under this new decree, is that we flow with you, Holy Spirit, and we don't hinder you and we don't put you in a box. We hear you and we respond. We hear you and we respond. And I'm going to leave you with this because I want to encourage you. I don't want this to be your expectation. Anytime that anybody leaves you or you hear a story, you have to understand that God is saying, I want you to grab hold to it. Angela is on here, I, I still believe, and I want her to testify to this. She doesn't know this either, but I want her to testify to this. We went out of town together because I had to preach. And so Angela was, was sweet enough, was amazing enough to come. And Chastity, but me and Angela were in the room together. They were amazing enough to come. Because they know I needed an adult with me. <laughs> anyway, so Angela and I had to stay in a room together. And it was a little bitty room. And, you know, people talk about how I'm funny. And I guess maybe I'm a little funny. But, you know, anyway. So when the room was very, very, very small. The room was very small. And so I just wake up. I, I wake up. I spring up all the time at like 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. And I don't care what time zone it's, I'm in. I just I just get up. And so we got in, I don't remember what time we got in, but we went to bed like at one and I slept very soundly until um, four or three or four, I don't remember. But when I got up, I sprung up, I went and I sat in a chair. I went from the bed and I sat in a chair and I began to pray, but I know I pray loud. So I got up, I got the key and I walked out the room and I walked up and down the hallways of the hotel on the floor I was on, and I just began, and I was just praying. I was just praying, because the room was really small, and I didn't want to bother her because she's asleep. And so, um, and so I'm walking up and down the hallway, and I'm praying, and you know, all the stuff. So I come back in the room, and she's up, right? And so later on that day, I think, we were talking to Chastity. I remember how the story came up, but she said, yeah, Anise is so weird. Anise is, I guess, you know, testified to what he just said. Anyway, Anise is so weird. Like, I, like she, she was up and I could hear her and I could feel her praying over me. Th that wasn't me. Those were my angels. I didn't do that. I got up and I walked over to a chair and I sat down. I got up, I grabbed a key and I walked out the room. What she encountered was God was letting me know what I was encountering when I was asleep. If you have sleep paralysis, no, 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 no. You got angels. You got angels. If you uh, uh, get in your, in your dreams and you can't get out, no, 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 no. You got angels. God has provided a way out for you in any dimension, in any dimension that you were in. And so God used that story to remind me, to remind me. You know, I see flashes, I see angels, I see, you know, like big angels, like people, some people can see like angels, you know. 
And so I've had, you know, a couple people, you know, um, they'll text me or something or, and they'll be like, you know, I can see angels behind you or like I'm going somewhere and I'll be around a little seer, you know, and you know, I say a little seer cause I'd be a little salty cause they could see so much, you know, and they'll be like, I just see these really huge, two big angels and they describe them all the time. And so when Angela said that, she said, and I could, she was like, yeah, and I could, you know, see, and I, or she said, I could feel or hear, I don't remember what she said. Um, a niece was standing over, like standing over me praying. I was not. I prayed for her, but that's weird to stand over somebody, another grown person who's not related to you and pray. <laughs> that's weird. As much as I may want to do that, you know, we already out here kind of, you know what I'm saying? So I want you, I need you to, I need you to hear that. Even we're still in prayer. I need you to hear that. I need you to understand you're covered. And, uh, <laughs> and all of that old stuff that you've encountered, that's not the expectation anymore. That's not the expectation anymore. And so, Father, I thank you for the release of your word. She said, so it didn't surprise me. <laughs> I thank you, God, for the release of your word. I thank you, God, for the release of a new moment. That we have asked, not just the dream of the Lord, but that our eyes are open and our moments on this side of glory and any heaviness any heaviness that is resting upon your people because they feel suffocated in their waking life they feel suffocated they have the prophetic of the Lord they have the voice of the Lord but it's not coming to pass they have big dreams but they don't have they have little resources they're living in a house with personalities and it's just there's no peace in the house and they feel suffocated. We release the word that God, you released your son, that he may come and that we may have life and life more abundantly. Zoe. And so the standard of the Lord, the standard of the Lord because you call him father. The standard of the Lord the standard of the Lord, not the standard you created, not the standard you make affirmation, the standard that God created, the standard that built your life, the standard that made him send his only son, that standard is your portion. That standard, that standard of living, that standard of being, that standard of moving is your portion. That standard of thinking, even in your thoughts where you feel like your thoughts are suffocated. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where it seems like your thoughts are kind of up and down and all around and all over the place. And even, I thank you, Holy Spirit. There's, um, I gotta go, Jesus. You feel like there's depression. Somebody, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know your name. You feel like depression is creeping up on you. You feel it. This year is all over the place. You feel this has been a tough year for everybody. <laughs> Jesus. You feel that depression. Thank you, sister. It's creeping up on you. We break that off of you now in the name of Jesus. We break that off of you now in the name of Jesus. If that's you, we break that off of you now in the name of Jesus. Just reach up and receive the standard. The standard of the word of the Lord. The standard of the heart of your king. The standard of the heart of your father. The standard of the heart of your creator. The standard. He did not create you to be down. He did not create you to be depressed. He did not create you to go through and go through. No, 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 no. The joy of the Lord is your strength. He has given you the Holy Spirit. There is a standard whereby which you have been made free and free forever. Reach up and receive the standard of your freedom. Just like that. Just like that. You don't need somebody to lay hands on you and to pour a bottle of oil on you. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't, but you don't need that. When God releases a word, all you got to do by faith is say, no, no, no. Even though I go through the standard is I am free. I am free from depression. I am free from sadness. I am free from thoughts and restlessness. I am free from insomnia. I am free from worry and anxiety. The standard. 
Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you that you have loosed the standard and that the angels who carry and perform the standard in the lives of your people, they are performing it right now. And so, God, I thank you that the pressure is lifting. I thank you that the spirit of heaviness is the spirit of doubt. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It was doubt that was bringing on heaviness, that it is coming off of your people. In the name of Jesus, for the name of Jesus, by the name of Jesus, it is so. Hallelujah. It is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. Hmm. Guys, here's the thing. Don't leave the presence of God too fast. If this word is like, just sit in the presence. Just sit in his presence. Close down social media. Put down your phone. And just sit in the presence of the Lord and let him wash you. Sit in the presence of the Lord and just let him speak to you. Just receive it. Hallelujah. So, Father, I just bless your people and I thank you, God, for your mighty, amazing presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, guys, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. We'll be on tomorrow. Sabine, we're going to pray for you tomorrow for real. Real good. We're going to pray for you real good. Real good. Okay. I love you guys. Amen. Good night.